Today, we're going to create this interactive portfolio page inside Framer. If you check the description, you'll find a starter file to follow along with. But even if you're just watching, your brain is actually learning too. It's almost like you're doing the work yourself. The page we'll design has some animations and interactive features. We'll build this main screen and when you click on a card, it'll open another screen. If you're interested in seeing how to create that second screen, just let me know in the comments. Once I'm in Framer, I'll go to Fill and set the background to a dark color. Pick the nav bar that looks closest to what I need and drag it onto the canvas. Then I'll just adjust the spacing, padding, and position to match the design. Using pre-built framework components saves me a lot of time when developing. I can quickly replace the logo and rename as well as add new navigation links to create a fully functional nav bar without worrying about making it responsive. Other than the logo and the links, the nav bar has a button. I'll make it by creating a new component called Button. Once I'm inside of the component, I can set its size and add the text. I'll write for now, Get In Touch text. I'll style it with a dark background and a light stroke. To create a hover effect, I don't need much either. I'll simply click on Hover to make the button slightly lighter when hovered over. To speed things up in the future, I'll create few more buttons that would be repeated across the page. They will be in the same component. So I'll just click on plus icons to make it another variant. For the primary CTA, I'll give it bright blue color as well as increase the text size. The website will also have a dark light mode switcher. To create that, I'll add a custom code element where I'll insert the code that handles the switch functionality. I'll place this code inside the component and then move the switcher to the nav bar, positioning it right next to the links. Now we can get to the exciting part. To make the background more interesting, I'll add gradients. I'll create a frame that covers the full width of the page and 75% of the height. I'll remove the fill because I'll be adding a rectangle inside. Instead of a plain fill, I'll use a radial gradient. I'll make it larger and place it around the center right side to make sure I have space to place other rectangle on the left side. Next, I'll duplicate the rectangle and change the color to pink to create a nice effect. The circles are being cropped at the bottom, so I'll add another container to make the height of the page larger so that it has space for all future content. I'll create a frame, remove the fill, and center align it. I'll move up the gradients. Now that the background is done, I'll start adding content to the page. I'll add a frame and remove the fill. Next, I'll add a tagline that says work. To give it some hierarchy and emphasis, I'll make it red and keep it small. I'll also add a headline that reads think, design, simplify, repeat. Make it two lines by setting max width. Under that, I'll add a paragraph description, make it two lines as well. To make the background more interesting, I'll add a grid pattern. I'll create one element and duplicate it multiple times. The next step is crucial for building this page, designing the interactive cards. These cards will have appearance animations and users will be able to drag them around the page. This not only looks great, but also helps increase user engagement, which is beneficial for both you and your site's SEO. I'll start by creating a container in which I'll place the cards. Since they will have to be placed randomly and move around on the page, I can't use a stack or auto layout. To build interactions and a one-pager like this, you'd normally need to learn basic design principles, how to use Figma, and then how to bring it to life with code. Using a no-code tool eliminates all of that. Now, all you need to do is learn the basics of Framer and start applying it to your work projects. Let me ask you, how much are you charging for a website? Back to when I was starting out as a designer, I'd get a project super excited and think, this is it, I'm going to crush this. But then, reality hit. I'd spend weeks on a single design. I mean, it felt like I was building the pyramids, one pixel at a time. And just when I thought I'd nailed it, the client would come back with a feedback. Can we make it pop more? Or my personal favorite? Can we try 10 different shades of blue? I'm sitting there like, sure, I'll just invent new colors while I'm at it. It was as if I had signed up for a never-ending game of Spot the Difference, but the difference was always invisible. At the time, I was getting paid a few hundred bucks for projects that took forever to complete. I remember spending entire days, sometimes nights, just on revisions. I get so tired I couldn't tell if I was working on the design or playing Tetris with text boxes. Meanwhile, I'd scroll through Dribble and it was like looking at the Louvre. Designers were out here creating masterpieces while I was still trying to figure out why my buttons didn't look right. You know that moment when you're like, 
Am I even cut out for this? Yeah, I live there. Then, after years of trial and error and realizing that I didn't have to design everything from scratch, I discovered no code tools. It wasn't some overnight miracle, but a gradual understanding that I didn't need to spend all my time developing from the ground up. These tools let me focus on what I'm best at, designing. Once I shifted my mindset and started using no code, things got a lot faster. I could design and develop in just a few hours, instead of weeks. And with all that saved time, I found myself not only doing better work, but earning more than I ever thought possible. After finishing the first card, I'll move it down and center it. To rotate it, I'll set the card to have an absolute position and adjust the rotation however I need. You don't have to follow my exact placement, I'm just going to randomly position them across the page. To add the animations, I'll click on the Effects tab and adjust the properties to get the result I want. I can tweak the easing and speed of the animations to my liking. For a drag animation, I'll just select it from the list and it will be automatically applied to the cards. Now I can move cards and when I refresh, they will be back in their place. I'll quickly add tooltip elements to the bottom of the page and make them interactive. Of course, no website is complete without a footer, so I'll add that as well. Once that's in place, I'll replace the placeholder images. It's super easy, just select the image elements and upload the ones you need, and you're good to go. Alright, let's preview the result. That wraps up our interactive portfolio page. As you can see, building this was quick and fun using these tools. If you found this helpful, be sure to check out my next video, where I show you how I built an entire website for a real client in just a few hours. It's packed with useful tips and tricks, so don't miss out. Hit that next video and let's keep creating together.